y'all know what came in the mail. Finally, my Celestial Odyssey Part 2 order came in. We're just gonna get straight into it. I ain't got time to waste. This is the first part one of the Pat McGrath Holiday collection to launch. This is the Celestial Odyssey palette. I posted this at this point weeks ago, review on this, all of that. I also have a tutorial video on this if you're interested in seeing the probably most exciting part of this collection. I will have that linked down below. So she launched her holiday collection in two parts. The palette was part one and then part two had bits and bobs like the blush palette, the eyeshadow quads, the highlights, some lip balms. And what I ended up picking up and what I'm reviewing today are the two eyeshadow quads and then the highlight. I did not order any of the blush palettes because I own all of the blushes. This is the a preliminary round of me testing these products. My mom actually ordered one of the blush trios for herself so when that comes in for her I actually am going to be doing probably another video doing another look with the quads incorporating the blush palette so keep an eye out for that but elephant in the room dang shipping for this took a long time and I have to say I know for most of you it's a different story but I live in Maryland, which is relatively close to New Jersey where their distribution center is, and I have never had an issue with Pat McGrath shipping. In fact, I got that Celestial Odyssey palette next day without having to pay next day shipping, so it's always come within a couple of days for me. They must have been really backed up because this took well over two weeks to get to me. What? Are we working on three weeks? I don't know, but it took a long time. Finally came to me, so I expect you guys to get your orders very soon as well. So shipping left a little something to be desired this time, unfortunately. Something wasn't working there. They did not do something right. That aside, they did package everything great. Everything was bubble wrapped. It was beautiful. I think things might be a little backed up, so proceed with caution if you are ordering from the Pat McGrath website. Now, I know on Sephora, not everything is available. Let me see. Sometimes Sephora shipping is off, but I'd recommend Sephora over Pat McGrath. However, they do not have the eyeshadow quads. The eyeshadow quads are currently only available on the Pat McGrath website, but the blush trios and the big Celestial Odyssey palette are available at Sephora, so I would order those from there. Anyways, let's get started. I'm gonna break it up. We're gonna start off with the eyeshadow quads, and then I will have in the timestamps when we get into the highlight, just so that you can easily navigate whatever you are looking for. So without further ado, let's get started with the Celestial Odyssey Luxe Quads. Like I said, I did pick up both. So let's look at the outer packaging first. So these Celestial Odyssey Quads, quads are $54 each and here's what the packaging looks like. So the pink packaging is bronze Borealis and then the red packaging is Deep Space Divinity. Here's what the back of the box looks like if you need to take a closer look. Both of these quads are made in the USA of US and imported ingredients, and they have a 12 month shelf life. So the box styles, they aren't, you know, the twisties or anything. It's just like a normal box. It's a beautiful box and I do keep the boxes. And then here are what the components themselves are going to look like so it's just the same black lacquered packaging that all of the Pat McGrath Luxe quads come in beautiful untouched now this time it just has the Pat McGrath labs name on it as opposed to uh, is it hieroglyphics whatever that you know what I'm talking about this this thing right here it's not even raised or anything I mean I don't mind it I think it's cute and then the back is going to look like this and this should have all of the details on here for you so one thing I want you to notice is the size of these Pat McGrath quads have never come in this size pan I'm just going to grab the Celestial Divinity Luxe quad from last year look at the pan sizes right here this year's are smaller and they are in the same components. So there's a lot more empty space this year. Now, here's the thing. The palettes from this year have 4.4 grams of product in total, whereas the quads from the previous years have eight grams of product. Not quite twice as much product, but 4.4 versus eight. That's a significant drop in product, which I'm fine with as long as the price drops. But here's the thing. These quads were this year were $54 each. For the Lux quads from last year, these are $58. So there is only a four dollar price decrease for almost half the amount of product. 
I don't know about that, y'all. Now, just so you know the price difference, and this is kind of irrelevant, but the Blitz Astral Quads that came out a couple years ago, these were $65, but these were the Blitz Astral Formula, which is clearly more expensive to make, and Pat only puts them sparingly out. So that's a significant price difference, but these have no Blitz Astral formulations in here. So it's about the same formulations as the Luxe Quad from last year, which is $58, that $4 price difference. So that's a little bit disappointing that there's less product. I mean, I like a nice price decrease, don't get me wrong, but I think there needed to be something bigger given the decrease in product. So just keep that in mind if you are considering purchasing these. But without further ado, that aside, let's look at each of the palettes individually. I do have some comparisons for you first. So let's zoom in a little bit closer and I'm gonna turn the lights down so we can see the colors better. So this is the Celestial Odyssey Bronze Brillis right here. And this one I have some comparisons for you. So let's go into the four shades. Lunar Legend, Sienna Rose, Mink Dusk. That's what these three are going to look like. Let's swatch. Swatch nice. Oof, that's gorgeous. The matte looks really nice and smooth too. Let's get Cyber Bronze. Feels super creamy. Now these feel really, really good as expected from Pat. So take a look. I mean, this is a gorgeous quad right here. So here are the formulations. Pearl Shimmer, this is also, this looks like a metallic to me, a matte, and then this is a metallic. So those are really pretty. But the big elephant in the room was you guys definitely wanted me to do some comparisons because I agree that this reminded me a lot of the Blitz Astro Quad in Ritualistic Rose that launched a couple of years ago. And I mean, when you see them side by side, they are very, very different, especially just because those formulations are different. But the shades, certainly, they are the same, right? So let me just swatch them for you so you can see. So I know this was a level of concern for you guys, but here is that palette from a couple years ago, Ritualistic Rose. They almost would pair really well together. They're definitely different enough to where I think you could own both. I know these two shades look kind of similar, but other than that, they're different enough to where I think it's okay to own both. I actually think that these two would work really well in combination for a look, so I would pair those two together. Now, if you're trying to convince yourself not to get this year's quads, I mean, this could convince you, absolutely. But if you are trying to convince yourself if you need this or not, I think it's okay. I actually honestly thought that this had a lot of similarities to the Divine Rose series. I pulled out my Divine Rose palette and let me just show you. So if you have the Divine Rose palette, take a look at it next to the Bronze Borealis. This looks like the extension to Divine Rose, doesn't it? It really looks like an extension. So if you like the vibe of Divine Rose, I think you would like this, but let me do similarities here. So here is Bronze Borealis, and here's from Divine Rose, what I thought was similar. Again, I would say Bronze Borealis is the perfect extension to Divine Rose. You can see there really aren't too many similar shades. It seems that this shade has the most twins <laughs> but the rest, I can't really find too much that are similar. Um, but again, very uh, repetitive for Pat McGrath here. While we were at it with Divine Rose, I also pulled out my Divine Rose too because I thought that there was a couple similarities in here as well. So take a closer look if you need to, but I definitely see a couple that I wanna swatch next to each other, so let's do that. Okay, so Divine Rose 2, I swatched a couple just so you could see. It seems that the darker shimmer is close. It's this one, this one is the one surprisingly that's not that unique, and this shade's a little bit more orange compared to the bronzy shade. This one's much more pink, this one's deeper. So I would say Divine Rose 2 and Bronze Borealis are more different, and Divine Rose and Bronze Borealis are closer, if that makes sense, but. Sure just take those swatches into consideration if you are interested in Bronze Borealis. I would say that this quad is definitely the least unique of the two and are closely related to some pre-existing palettes. Okay, so it's eyeshadow application time. I'm just gonna put Bronze Borealis on this eye and let's see what we're working with. So as you could expect, we're gonna start off with the matte shade right here. I'm using an Isum S33. Yeah, a little bit of kickback. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm going to pat this on the outer corner of my eye. This is a beautiful mauve shade right here. And we're gonna blend that. I'm just gonna keep this in the outer corner for now. Next up, we're going into this shade right here. I'm using a Sonia G Builder Brush. And 
leave room for two more shades on the lid so I'm just kind of adding a small stripe of the product. This is definitely going to pick up more if you use your finger but I want to use brush so that I can have more of a precise application. The shade is beautiful and it's the perfect duo with that matte shade. I love it. We're gonna use this one again for sure. Just wait. Next we're using Cyber Bronze. I'm just gonna use the same brush and I want this to pop on my eyelid. Make sure you leave a little bit of space. I mean, I don't have anything bad to say about the quality of these. They're gorgeous. It's just a matter if you need it. <laughs> and next we're gonna use the lightest shade. This one seems a little extra powdery, so we're getting a little bit more fallout with this one. But a nice application here. Now let's see if we can touch up with the fingers to get a little bit more oomph. So I'm starting off with the darkest shimmer. These definitely respond well to a finger pickup because they are so creamy. They worked with a brush, but if you're looking for intensity, I would use a finger. But I really just wanted precise application. And this shade right here feels a little bit less creamy than the rest. It's a little bit more dry and powdery, but it's still a very good shade. I'm not saying that it's bad with those words. I'm just saying compared to the others, it's a little bit more dry feeling. It's a little bit more powdery. And then I'm gonna take that original matte brush that we used and I'm going to make sure the shimmers are all blended out on the edges. And how pretty is that? Okay, I'm going back into my builder brush. And I told you I wanted to use this shade again. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm just getting it on the tip of this brush, running this along the outer half of my lower lash line. It's doing pretty well with this technique. And then I want more of the bronze shade. I think this one's my favorite one in the palette. It's probably very dupable, but it just adds so much oomph to the look. And then finally, I need this depth right here. Maybe bring a little bit down here and blend the edges. That's the look. I mean, it's really beautiful. It's soft, it's wearable. But if I didn't know that this was a new Pat McGrath palette, I would look at my eye and I would say, is that Divine Rose 1 or Divine Rose 2? It definitely looks like I have one of the Divine Rose palettes on my eye. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's take a closer look at Deep Space Divinity. Ugh. Nice and fresh and pristine. Here is the back in case you need to see it. And let's take a look. Again, the same pan size is really beautiful. So let's get to swatching here. So we have Golden Aura and Rose Nocturne. So this is like a velvety matte. And then this is going to be, I think it's a satin shimmer if we're going in terms of her formulation names, but it's a shimmer shade. <laughs> here we go. Ooh, that's really, really smooth. Very pretty. And that matte, okay. Okay, and this one's kind of the star on, of the show, Alien Moon. Gorgeous, I mean, I wish I could say this was unique, but if any brand does a duochrome, it's likely this like blue-brown kind of look. This is one of her metallic duochromes, and I think this is, I don't know what this is, a metallic shade? Anyways, this is Dawn Fantasia. Oof, gorgeous. You can see that shift right there of that red-brown. Then just a nice metallic bronze shade right here. So I really like this color story. I think it's really fall appropriate. It's a little bit deeper, a little bit more grungy. This is the one that I thought had a twin in the line. Like honestly, I thought there's no way that these aren't the same. In fact, when I first saw this Deep Space Divinity being promoted, I was like, is that a re-promote? Because we have the Celestial Divinity Luxe Quad and in Interstellar Icon right here. And you can't tell me that these don't look the same. I mean, you can see now that they're different formulations for sure, but seriously, I mean, we couldn't do something a little bit more different. They're different. They look like they need to be worn together, a Kirby one palette, but as two individual quads, they're suspiciously similar, no? <laughs> so let me show you the similar shades. Now swatched, I will say they definitely look different from one another, but it's that situation where they could definitely go together for one look. I think this palette's a little bit more unique than Bronze Beryllis, honestly, though. Even the duochrome shade is completely different, which is very nice. And this is more pinky champagne. So I would say these two look a lot more similar to one another than they actually are. When we get to swatching, the whole tone is different. The formulations are very different. So they're not as similar as they look. But again, you're going to have to decide if 
the $54 is worth it to you or not if you do have this one. I think if you have that interstellar icon, it's gonna give you more of like a grungy look. But enough chit chat, let's get it on our eyes. I'm wiping off my brushes, by the way, on this Sigma mat, which is amazing for switching colors. Start off with the matte shade. We still got a little bit of kick up, but nothing crazy. I'm not gonna do anything too crazy today because I want that duochrome shade literally on my entire eyelid. Um, This is really pigmented and it has a little bit more of a berry tone to it than I was expecting, but I got a crazy amount of pigment from that. So let's just blend the edges a little bit. You know, with Pat McGrath, it really isn't about having the matte stand out for me. I'm all about the shimmers. So that's why when I use a matte from Pat McGrath, I tend to really only circle it in the outer corner. But um, the shade is very, very pigmented and blending crazy. So this is a good quality shade, but use a lighter hand than I just did. Oh man. Okay, I'm not going to be shy. I'm just going to go in with my finger and use Alien Mood all over the lid. Like I said, when brands do a duochrome, it's usually this style of duochrome color, that blue-brown. It must be the easiest one to make. So I don't want to say that this shade is necessarily unique, but it's definitely the one that catches your eye when you see it. And sometimes I'm not the biggest fan of duochromes. I don't like when the darker shift is on the inner corner, depending on where the light is hitting. I think I do like this better than Sextra Terrestrial in the Divine Rose too, because that shift in that one is so unflattering. This one is not as bad. It actually looks really really flattering with this matte shade. Ooh, I like this one. I think I might like this quad better. I'm still like fighting with this matte shade though. I put way too much on. I'm gonna be super simple and use this as the inner corner color and along the inner half of my lower lash line. A little pop right here. Dang, that's pigmented. That's beautiful. Look at that. For being such a light shade, I'm impressed with that. That had legitimate coverage to it. It's literally covering that matte shade. That's a great quality shadow. And then we're gonna use the bronze shade now, the outer half. Honestly, because I have nowhere on my eyes to put it because I needed that alien color everywhere. Oh, that's pretty. I'm sure this is gonna be super beautiful all over the lid. If you use this in the crease and this all over the lid, it's gonna change the whole vibe of this palette and give you a bronzy, kind of look. I do want to carry some of the matte shade using a lighter hand this time, just in the outer third, to bring that warmth to create more of a cohesive look. Almost bring it right below my eye socket. Made me look a little sick doing that, but we'll say it's editorial. I meant to do that. I love this quad. I think this quad is gorgeous. Let me put on liner and lashes and I'm gonna change my lip color and we're gonna do a final reveal. In terms of the quads, here's what the final looks are. Like I said, I do plan on doing another video with the blush palette and everything else in this collection so that I can do like a full cohesive look as opposed to having to split it. But I can say from first use, I definitely prefer Deep Space Divinity just because I feel like it's a little bit more unique and more fun. You can still get a neutral look with Deep Space Divinity. But when I think of Pat McGrath and I go for Pat McGrath, I'm typically not going for wearable. I'm going for fun. So that's why this is best suited towards me. However, for those of you who prefer something more wearable, this is absolutely stunning. This is probably the one I'm going to end up using more but if you're similar to me and you're a collector this is the one I would say you need the least if you have the Divine Rose palettes because while this isn't identical to the Divine Rose palettes there's just a lot in her line that has shades similar to the Bronze Brillis so it's not a necessity that's for sure but I think the Deep Space Divinity is a little bit more unique if you're thinking in terms of that but performance wise both worked absolutely beautiful quality is great love both of the looks that's on my eyes so I do recommend them if they are something that is on your mind. Now, I think a lot of you guys were almost more excited for this just because of curiosity and because of the crazy price, <laughs> which I probably would not have bought this highlight if I didn't have a review channel. So thank you for giving me an excuse to buy this. So this is the Skin Fetish Sublime Skin Highlight. This is what the box looks like. I love it. This is my favorite packaging of all of the palettes today. And here's the back if you need to see anything in particular. So this highlight is made in Italy and it has an 18 month shelf life. The catch with this highlight is this one single highlighter. It is $60 and realistically, you probably should not spend $60 on a singular highlight. I haven't even put this on and I'm telling you now, if you're struggling with the price, please do not buy a $60 highlight. There's so many amazing highlighters on the market, but Sometimes curiosity kills the cat, right? So first of all, the component here is absolutely stunning. Wait, 
Yes, it is a gorgeous gold component this time. I'm absolutely obsessed with how the back is black with the gold sticker on top that has the lettering. Stunning. This is the luxest of the luxe. Now, it's not extremely heavy. It's the same weight as the eyeshadow quads, in case you're wondering, because I know Pat McGrath had a highlighter last year that was super heavy. It's not super heavy, but it, it feels sturdy. It don't feel like plastic. So the, this has 8.6 grams of product. This is a lot of product because just for comparison, the Divine Glow highlight is 4.6. So yeah, you're getting a lot of product in here, but you don't need a lot of highlighter is the thing. I'd rather get a smaller amount for a smaller price. But anyways, I mean, this is the luxest of the lux if you're into lux makeup like me. <laughs> here is the selling point. Look at this. This is the most beautiful royal embossment I've ever seen. Honestly, if you didn't think Pat could one-up herself, she managed to do it with this highlight. Absolutely stunning. I wish this inside part was gold, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. And you do have a mirror in here which is lined with the gold. But I haven't touched this yet for the reason that um, this is so beautiful. I still don't want to touch it, but we must. So this is supposed to be a gel powder formulation. It has an opalescent sheen, multi-dimensional, buildable, and lightweight. It's formulated to become one with the skin and you can effortlessly layer for custom intensity. <sighs> Oh my god, that feels really good. It feels very slippery. Like it doesn't feel really, really wet or anything. And look at that pigmentation. Oh, oh my gosh, this feels heavenly. It, it almost feels like silk. That's the way to describe the consistency. It's silky. Oh, this feels really good. Let me compare it to a few other highlights. So we're gonna do Divine Glow. This is in her permanent line. And let's see how this compares. It feels different. It's, this is not as silky or gelée feeling as the new highlight. Has a more champagne-y golden tone to it. So these are definitely different. And in person, when the light's not flashing directly, this has more pink to it as well. So it looks very different. So this is from, I believe it's last year's collection. This is what I'm talking about, that it's super duper heavy. This was this, about the same price point as this year's holiday highlighter. This was made in Taiwan and I did not like this highlight at all. It felt really wet and like spongy. I didn't like this formulation. It was wasn't worth it to me. Feels completely different than this year's. Oh my gosh, it's so much more cool toned and purple. So that's very different. Last highlight I have to compare for you is the Divine Rose highlight. So this comes in like pink packaging. Super cute, by the way. So here we go. Again, Pat hasn't come out with a highlight that feels quite like this year's. And this is much more pink, so. This one is a lot brighter, I feel like. It's a lot shinier, and it feels much more lightweight and silky than the others. I love the way it swatched. Taking a look with it out of the sun, I feel like this is gonna be good. Let's see. We just gotta, we just gotta put it on. All right, let's do it. I'm using a Kaleidos H1 brush. Not too much pickup, if any at all. Barely any. Beautiful. So this first layer isn't anything crazy. Let's build it up. Okay, with that second coat, all of a sudden, it's a whole different ball game now. And she says it's formulated to become one with the skin. And I do agree with that. As I've blended it out, you can't see where the highlighter starts and where it ends. So that's one of the things that I look for the most in highlights. This is beautiful. It's pulling a little bit bright on my skin, almost a little bit more cool toned. It's a little bit more bright than I typically prefer for a highlight color. I don't know if you can see that. It just doesn't match the undertone of my skin, so it's not completely skin-like because of the tone, and I like highlighters that match my undertone. But again, it's absolutely beautiful. Let's use it as our inner corner highlight now, just to brighten everything up. I mean, this highlight is stunning. You can see I do have a lot of texture going on right here. It's not emphasizing it like crazy. The nature of highlights is to highlight, so it's going to show off your texture, but it almost is like it avoids the texture. It doesn't necessarily highlight it, but it doesn't smooth it out either. It's not bad, I really like this. I think it sits beautifully on this skin. This is a really fantastic highlight. Do I think it's worth $60? No, 
<laughs> Probably not. Am I happy that I have it though? Yes, I mean, this is such a luxe Pat McGrath experience. I think, you know, this particular product goes beyond the product itself. It's about the packaging. It's about the embossment. And if that doesn't excite you, by all means, please do not buy this highlight. But if you are somebody that gets excited by the experience, this is going to give it to you. I did it. I covered everything that I've picked up from the Celestial Odyssey collection. And overall, in terms of quality, this collection is spot on with the rest of the Pat McGrath line. You won't be disappointed quality wise, which is why I thought it was so important to give you all of the swatch comparisons, just so that you could see what you already have in your collection but in terms of quality everything is definitely a thumbs up it's just a matter of what you feel you need in your collection but I'm very happy with everything I mean I even love the highlight I love this eye I love this eye I mean Pat does it again yeah <laughs> anyways let me know your thoughts down below did you pick up anything from this collection have you received your shipping notification yet i hope you guys found this video helpful and thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and for liking this video i will see you all in the next one keep an eye out for the tutorial diving even deeper into this yeah bye guys have a good one